Welcome to an introduction to deep learning. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a deep neural network, which will basically take as input a picture of a digit and will give you as output what digit it is. Now, I know what you're thinking, this application is a bit useless. Why would I need something like this? And I'll tell you what, has this ever happened to you? Hello? Hello, this is Google HR. We're calling regarding your job offer. Is this Anna Zmirnov? Yeah, this is Anna. Excellent. So I'll give you this number. You have to call as soon as possible to finalize the job One offer. One minute, please. Please note this down. 07543-216-411. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Great, thank you. <laughs> Shit. If only I had some way to read these digits and classify them. True story. And that's how I got fired by Google. Just kidding, I never worked there. So this is a great tutorial for anyone who has never done any machine learning or you did some, but you're not very comfortable with it. It's a great beginner lesson. We're gonna use Keras to create a deep learning model and I'm gonna explain everything on the way. You don't really need to know any math for this. The only thing you need to have for this tutorial is some Python programming knowledge. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so before we go into the code, let's have a quick look at the general overview of what we'll be doing. What we basically have is a neural network, which we're gonna build, which is this black box over here, titled f of x right now. We're gonna be giving that our data, which is images of 110 digits. For example, this is a number five. And we want the network to predict what kind of number this is. So in this case, it uses a label five. And by convention, we label our data x and our labels y. And our network, we can think of it as a big function f of x, which basically maps the input data to the label. So we have data x, our function f of x, and then we have an output y. Now, if you think about this, computers can really read images like we do. What happens is that the image is actually an array of numbers or a matrix of numbers where each value represents a certain pixel intensity. So keep that in mind for when we're coding. And also, let's go have a look into this black box over here. This is going to be our neural network. And what basically happens is we're going to take that input array of numbers, which is our image. And we're gonna have to take a lot of those images and calculate certain weights, which will be represented by the arrows here, which would be used by our neural network to calculate the function, which will approximately give you an accurate answer of what number this is. So during the training phase, we give a lot of images to this network, and then we have the corresponding labels in the dataset. We know what the numbers in those images are. And with time, after the network sees every image, it learns to calculate the correct weights. And then we reach a point where the network has optimal weights, which you denote by W star, which pretty much means we're happy with the predictions we get. And after we get to this point, we can perform some inference. So we'll give it a new image, which it hasn't seen before. And the network will use the weights that we trained before, to calculate the prediction. And it will tell us, for example, this image I believe is a nine with 98% confidence. So that's all we're doing here, right? So the whole process again is we get our data, we feed it to the network, which we're gonna build later, and then we get as an output the label. Now let's get our hands dirty and start coding. Okay, so the quickest way you can follow me in this tutorial is to just go to Google Colab and make an account, a Google account if you don't have one. If you do have one, just log in and we can use the notebooks in Google Colab to start coding without installing any other dependencies. So we're gonna go to this menu, we're gonna click new notebook and then after the notebook loads, we're gonna start by naming this whatever you want. I'll just say NIST digits classification and we can start coding. I assume you're familiar with notebooks. If not, uh, I'll just show you really quickly. If you add the text box here, you can basically add text and code boxes and in the text boxes, you can write titles and that will make it easier for you to be able to read your code because it's more structured. And if you add a hashtag, you can make this into like a heading, heading one title. So I'll just say import here and click shift enter. And then this is transformed to a title, which is very nice when you're looking at your code later, and you're trying to find which part of the code does what. So we're gonna import some libraries for the tutorial. So follow me, import numpy as np, import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. And then we're gonna say percentage sign matplotlib inline. This line is just to make the plots appear automatically without you having to do plt.show. Import keras from keras.models import sequential from keras.layers import dense and dropout from sklearn.metrics import confusion matrix with an underscore 
and import Seaborn as SNS. And then we're gonna set np.random.seed to zero. So we have constant results every time. They don't change because of the randomness. And hit shift enter. Shift enter again runs the cell. And apparently I have a table here. Let me just fix it. Matplotlib. Shift enter again. And it looks like it works. So we're not gonna be using the GPU for this example. We can train everything on the CPU. But in case you want to do it for another project, Google Colab has a GPU, which is one of the advantages of using this. So up next, we're gonna have a look at our data. We wanna see what kind of data we're dealing with. So I'm gonna click here on the top cell, click add text, and I'm gonna add hashtag data, shift enter again, so we can see where we're at. And I'm gonna say from keras.datasets, import list, and then open brackets, x train, comma, y train with underscores, comma, open brackets again, x test, comma, y test, close bracket equals nist dot load data. I have a table here again. And this basically loads and downloads the data from Keras, which is the NIST data set. And let's just print how much data we have here so we have an idea of what we're dealing with. So I'll print the x underscore train dot shape. Dot shape is what you use to access the dimensions for the numpy array. And y dot train dot shape. And also I'm gonna print the test data. X underscore test dot shape and y underscore test dot shape. Shift enter. So we see for the train data, we have 60,000 images of 28 by 28 size and then 60,000 labels. The labels is just a number, so that's why we don't have any second dimension and 10,000 for the test. So let's visualize some examples so we see what we're dealing with. I'm gonna add another text box and I'm gonna say hashtag visualize examples. And here on the code, I'm gonna make a quick loop so we can visualize one of each number. I'm gonna say num underscore classes equals 10 f comma ax for the figure and axis equals plt dot subplots we're gonna say one row num classes columns which is 10 and we're gonna say the fixed size should be 20 by 20. this is a bit random but i've tested it before and it's what looks the best and then i'm gonna say for i in range 0 comma num classes we're gonna show an image so sample one image from the training data set where the y train is equal to i, so from 0 to 1, and then just take the first image from the sample. And then we're going to say in the axis of Matplotlib, show the image. So I im show sample, comma, cmap equals gray because we want to use the grayscale values. Uh, this is not an RGB image. And we're going to set the title so we see the label. So axi dot set title on open brackets label colon squiggly brackets format i and then font size equals 16 and then i'm gonna hit shift enter and we can see the images here if you don't want to follow me writing the code i'm gonna give you the final code at the end but if you want to keep up and if i'm going too fast you can just pause the video and copy the code in case I forget to like spell out every line. So here we see all the numbers and the corresponding labels. So we have like a zero, a one, a two, a three, a four, and whatever. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. These are the, our images. And this data set is pretty much balanced, so we don't have to do any class balancing. So that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. But one thing we have to do is we want to encode our labels. So let's have a look at our labels right now and see how they look. For i in range 10, print y train i. So now our labels are just a number, but unfortunately we can't feed our network these numbers because right now these values are continuous and what we want to do is classification. So we want to make each one of those values as a class. Because think about it, if we keep this as a number, that means that if we have some digit which looks kind of like between a 4 and a 5, the network will predict something like 4.5 and we don't really want that. We want to be confident in like one class only. So what we do is something called one hot decoding. We're gonna say y underscore train equals keras dot utils dot two categorical and then open brackets y train comma num classes and then copy this line and do the same for white test and I'm gonna explain to you right now what we're doing okay and then let's print the data again so I'm just gonna copy the code from above 
Okay, so what happened here? Basically, what we did is we create a vector for each one of those numbers, which is as long as the number of numbers we have, which is 10. So we have a vector of size 10, and then we fill the vector with zeros, except for the index where our number is. So for number five, we're gonna have a one at the fifth index of the vector, which will represent our number. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. Same for number zero. We have a one at the beginning, the rest are zeros. And this way, our network can learn to predict that one exact value for the class and we will be basically getting at the end a probability of that image being some certain number so if we want to predict number five our network will be like okay on the fifth index we're gonna say it's like probably this 0.99 or whatever and on the rest it will be 0 0.001 0 0.001 stuff like that you're gonna see this later but this is basically standard practice when you're dealing with classes you want to encode it into something that's more discrete so we use the one whole vector encoding now i'm gonna make a new text box i'm gonna say hashtag prepare data because this is where we prepare our data. And something very important that we usually do when we prepare the data before we feed them to the model is normalizing our data. I'm not gonna go into the math of why we have to normalize the data right now, but always keep in mind that you have to keep the data into a certain range. Otherwise, the network has a much harder time doing the training and learning the correct weights. So we always wanna normalize our data before we feed them to the network. And in this case, because we have data which are RGB images and the values range from zero, which is black, to the value 255, which is white, we just wanna divide by that value 255 and then we wanna have everything in the range from zero to one. So that's the normalization we're gonna apply in this example. So we're gonna say, we're gonna put a comment normalize data and I'm gonna say x train equals x train divided by 255 and then x test equals x test divided by 255 shift enter have a another table here I'll fix this and then what we want to do is reshape our data and basically what we have here is this our shape right now but if I show you the first sample, it's 28 by 28. But we don't really want to pass this matrix as our input. What we want to do is flatten it into like a one long vector and pass that one long vector to the neural network. And we can also stack them together later to feed a lot of data at the same time. So instead of 28 by 28, I want to do this. I'm going to delete this line and then I'm going to say x train equals x train dot reshape. Open brackets. I'm going to say x train dot shape zero because we want to keep the same number of images as before and then comma minus one and this comma minus one will basically make this 28 by 28 into 28 by 28 in one dimension so we're gonna print it later to see and then we're gonna copy this and do the same for x test so change x train to x test and now let's print the dimensions so i'm gonna say print x train dot shape and shift enter so now you see we have 60,000 images as before, but this time it's like 784 as a second dimension, not 28, 28. So this is the one vector we're gonna be passing every time for the image. Okay, I'm making a new text box. And now, I'm gonna move this up. We're gonna have to make our model, which is the fun part. It's gonna be a fully connected neural network for this tutorial. So how do we make neural network in Keras? Firstly, we're gonna say model equals sequential open close brackets and what the sequential model is in Keras is basically a model where we can keep adding layer after layer and create a chain of layers it's one of the easiest ways to create a deep neural network in Keras so we're gonna say model.add and here we're gonna specify the dimensions and the layers we're gonna use so we're gonna say use a dense layer units are 128 input shape is 784 comma which is basically our image when it's flattened and then our activation we're gonna use is relu and the activation is basically a function you add after the layer to be able to solve non-linear equations uh, it's not important to go into the math of this right now but just know that relu is something you use very often when designing a neural network and then we're gonna say model.add in a new line another dense layer units again one to eight comma activation equals relu no need to specify the input shape here because it's automatic then model dot add dropout open brackets again 0 0.25 and this means that 25 percent of our neurons are gonna be deactivated during the training which helps prevent overfitting from the network and then we're gonna say model dot add another dense layer and then this time units is gonna be 10 because we want to output to 10 different neurons which is gonna be our classifier basically because we have 10 different digits and the activation this time 
would be a softmax, which basically assigns a probability for each class to be correct. Then after we design the model, we're gonna say model.compile and then say the loss is categorical cross entropy. The optimizer would be Adam. And the metrics we're gonna use is this time you have to open square brackets, just accuracy. So basically what this line does it says okay we're gonna use categorical cross entropy as our loss which is basically a loss we use often when we have to deal with multiple classes the optimizer is adam which is pretty much a go-to optimizer when you're making neural networks and we're just going to use the accuracy as our metric and then finally let's do model.summary open close brackets to see the summary of our model shift enter so we see we have around 118,000 parameters now let's move on to the training stage we're gonna add a new textbooks here let me train. So the batch size we're gonna say is 512, which basically means we're gonna import 512 images in the network at a single time. Epochs, we're gonna say 10 for now, but we can increase it later if we have to. And then I'm gonna say model.fit, and this is the line that's gonna start the training of our data. X equals X train, Y equals Y train, so our data and our labels. The batch size is gonna be the batch size we defined before and then the epochs are going to be the epochs we defined before and now we can start training so let's hit shift enter so you can see the network is training now it's going one epoch at a time it's pretty fast uh, because it's a light network you can see that the loss goes down on every iteration and the accuracy goes up on every iteration which is what exactly we want basically as long as we don't overfit so here at the end we have 98 percent 98.5 percent almost accuracy on the training set which is pretty good but the real thing we have to check is how does it perform on the validation set of the test set which hasn't been used in the training so to do that we're gonna make a new evaluate block and check our performance on that data so I'm gonna say test loss comma test accuracy on the test set equals model dot evaluate x test comma y test so again this is the data that the network hasn't seen before and we're gonna say print test loss open close square brackets this is just basic python syntax i assume you know and then print the accuracy and then we're gonna print the format test loss comma test accuracy shift enter so we see the test loss is 0 0.06 and the test accuracy which is what makes more sense to us is 0 0.97 98 almost percent on the test set which is really good you can get a bit better actually because this is a very simple data set but this shows that basically we haven't overfitted on the data so now let's see how we would use this model to predict a classification on some input image so i'm gonna say y pred equals model dot predict x test so this will give us an array with all the predictions from our test data and then i'm gonna say y pred classes equals np argmax open brackets y pred comma axis equals one and i'm gonna print both objects so you see why we do the second step so i'm gonna say print y pred oops and then print y pred classes okay and let's see what happens so basically in the first variable what we get is basically probability for every element to be from a single class so you can see those very small probabilities here and what we do with the argmax command is we basically go to every row and pick the highest probability and return that index so in the second variable y pred classes we basically get the index which is pretty much the number of the classification so the first is a seven the second is a two because if you check the array the seventh spot which is probably this one here from visually looking at it is the highest probability of all of the 10 probabilities in the array and we do this for every element so now let's try and get the random element from our test data and make a prediction and see if that's accurate. I'm gonna say here for a single example, let's pick a random index. So we'll say random idx equals np.random.choice len x test. And then I'm gonna say x sample equals x test. And I'm gonna say index is random idx and then i'm just gonna get all the predictions and say y true equals np.argmax y test on axis one so we get the actual numbers not the probability matrices 
not the probability vectors and I'm gonna say y sample true equals y true at the random index and y sample pred class equals y pred classes at the random index so now let's draw our image and plot the label as well to see what's happening plot plt to title predicted equals open curl brackets true same thing let's just format it right nicely uh, format y sample pred class comma y sample true comma font size equals 16 just so we can see it and then i'm gonna say plt image show the x sample we just retrieved and i'm gonna reshape it to a 28 by 28 image because before we have flattened it out as you remember so we're gonna, we're gonna make it square and the cmap equals gray so i'm gonna hit shift enter and we see for this image so we picked up the two and the network predicted that it's a two which is true so the predicted value is true and the true label was two so we can see it works so one other step is because we're using a lot of classes here and we only have an accuracy metric we don't really know if our network is predicting one class better than the others so what we usually plot in these problems is something called a confusion matrix which basically shows you how accurate your network is for every class so let's do that right now i'm gonna make again a new text here and i'm gonna say confusion matrix i'm gonna say confusion matrix confusion mtx equals confusion matrix which is an actual function we imported before of the y true data and the y pred classes and then we're gonna plot this matrix more nicely with using some libraries we imported before so let's do that i'm gonna say figure comma axis equals plt dot subplots fix size equals 15 comma 10 and i'm gonna say the axis is sns dot heat map we give it the confusion mtx we just made annotation is true and not equals true fmt equals d ax is the axis we just made and cmap is gonna be blue because it's the nicest color i found so this is just some settings i found before when i was trying testing this out don't really worry about this just copy the line uh, and we're gonna set the label set the x label ax dot set x label as predicted label we're gonna say ax dot set y label as true label and then we're gonna set the title as confusion matrix okay and then i'm going to copy like a semicolon at the end so it doesn't print the object that when this is finished shift enter and we have this so what does this mean it looks pretty but it does have a meaning so basically you can say that every column and every row is a class for a digit right and what we see on the left is these are our true labels and on the bottom these are our predicted labels so what this says is basically let's take zero for every zero that has a true label of zero so it's an actual zero image we predicted 968 zeros so our model is pretty accurate but you can see we also predicted two zeros to be twos one zero to be four one zero to be five and so on so if you take let's say let's say four uh for all the true fours we predicted like 961 of them to be fours accurately but for example we had nine fours here predicted as nines so you can use this confusion matrix to see exactly how good your network is and how accurate this looks pretty good so most of our classes here are accurately classified and it's like, very useful to do that now this is probably the end of this lesson and you know pretty much most of what you have to know for this tutorial but i'm gonna show you a small bonus in case you're interested feel free to skip the next section but it's gonna be quite brief so what i want to show you is that basically we found that our network is very accurate right and it does a good job in most of the samples but the question is what happens with the samples that don't get correctly classified what is the reason maybe we should visualize some of those samples and see how exactly the digits look and then maybe theorize of why the network doesn't actually predict those classes correctly so i'm gonna show you how we do that and i'm gonna briefly explain how it is but if you know enough numpy you can pretty much study the code later and find out so i'm gonna make a new text block i'm gonna say investigate some errors and let's do this i'm gonna say errors equal open brackets y pred classes minus y true where it's unequal to zero 
So basically this finds the values where the predicted classes are not the same as the true classes. Okay, and then we'll say y pred classes errors equals y pred classes index at the errors and then y pred errors equals y pred errors and I'm just gonna copy and change this line three times so I'm gonna say y true errors in the second line change the next one as well to y true and then y test errors the last one and I'm gonna say x so this is gonna be x test errors and then I'm gonna say x test okay so we have it like this okay I missed something here the table okay so we've basically made some new variables where we keep all the error values and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to find the errors with the maximum probability so basically we're going to find those values where the algorithm is the least certain of the correct prediction so i'm going to say y pred errors probability equals np max y pred errors on axis one and I'm gonna say true probability errors equals np dot diagonal np dot take y pred errors comma y true errors comma axis one and then I'm gonna say the difference diff errors pred true equals y pred errors probability minus true probability errors. And then I'm going to get a list of the indices of when I sort all the error differences so we can get like the highest errors. So, so differences, I'm going to say sorted IDX diff errors equals MP arc sort diff errors thread true and top IDX diff errors equals sorted idx diff errors and i'm gonna say minus five and colon so this basically picks the five last ones okay so again i didn't really explain this in much detail let me fix i have like another tab here yeah so basically if you go through this a bit at a time you're gonna see it's basically doing some math to pick the five values which the network has the least confidence about and i basically just went through the math and i basically went into the matrix calculations one step at a time to see what exactly it's doing when i was doing it so i suggest doing the same thing so i'm gonna say num equals len top idx diff errors f comma ax equals plt dot subplots one num Big size let's say 30 by 30 Just to put this in brackets and for i in range 0 to num i'm gonna say idx equals top idx diff errors at index i sample equals x test errors at idx dot reshape 28 by 28 so we have the full image yt equals y true errors at index idx yp equals y pred classes errors at index idx and then axis at index i i am show sample cmap equals gray and axis at index i set the title to predicted label like this make a new line true label is this dot format yp comma yt and then we're gonna set the font size to 22 and finally let's just do shift enter so here we have the five images with the least confidence uh, of the prediction so if you look at these images you can tell they do look a bit weird like for example this image here could be a one or could be a six you, we can't really tell from our eye anyway same as this one this is like a one but it, it could be kind of like a two 
this zero could be kind of like an eight you can see here you have this thing in the middle uh the nine i guess it goes confused because of this dot here uh, which threw off the neural network but basically you can see that the predictions which it doesn't really get are predictions that like a, a person could make a mistake with so a classifier is pretty good and that's it we've created a classifier i hope you're now a bit more knowledgeable of machine learning and you can already start thinking of some projects to work on make sure you subscribe to the channel right below click the notification bell to be updated every time i release a new video and please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or things you're not very sure about if you want to see more of this type of content and generally any thoughts you have on the video i'm open suggestions i will see you guys next time take care